used to be that she just fell out. Okay. She was about 6'2", about 300 pounds. Black woman, real tall. She's about this wide. Mm -hmm. You know, she could have whooped us all easy. And so she was breathing, but she fainted. She just fell out. So one of the nurses came, a couple of nurses came up and they put their bags down and they noticed that I, I kept, I touched her hand and I was counting her respirations and trying to get her pulse. Mm -hmm. And she said, did, did you see her go down? And I said, yeah, I, she just, she just went out and down she went. I mean, she hit the floor like a hot potato, you know, and, uh, but I wasn't going to do anything to her because she was breathing on her own. You know, she didn't need CPR, mm -hmm. but she had passed out and she was like non-responsive. She was mumbling under her breath and her eyes were just like rolling around in her head. Like she just got dizzy and just fell out, you know. So I told the nurses, I said, I'm going to leave her with you, you know, because I, I, I have to clock. They were clocked out coming out and I was coming in to clock in. I didn't want to be late. I said, I'm going to leave her with you. And, that, and a couple more nurses come by, and they said, yeah, you go ahead and clock in. We'll take care of her. So okay. they called and, and asked for a gurney and that kind of thing. And when I left, they were taking care of her, checking her, checking her over and stuff. But okay. I wouldn't have given her, I, I mean, it's it's a catch-22. You wouldn't have gave her what because now? Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't give her CPR because she was breathing. She just okay. passed out. Now let's change the let's change it's, the subject. It's a I mean, catch. Story. It's a catch twenty two because no matter who you give CPR to, you're gonna crack ribs. Okay. It don't matter. You're gonna crack ribs. I don't care what age they are. When you get, when you start them compressions in that chest, what if she them ribs are gonna pop. What if she wasn't what if she wasn't breathing? I would back up and let the nurses take care of it. What if the nurses wasn't around? I don't know. What I don't know what I would do because I've never been in that predicament. Oh, let me ask you this: you 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 you're riding down the street. All of a sudden, you you see somebody head off inside some water, face down, like they're floating or whatever. You get out, you run over there, you grab the person, you pull the person up out the water, you check the pulse and stuff. You see that the person is not breathing. What do you do? What would you do, is what I'm asking. Like I said, I don't know. You wouldn't do chest compressions on them? Not if, not if they were going to send me and take every dime I had. I'm not talking about black people. I'm just talking about a person, I, no, period. No, anymore. It's anybody. It's anybody for itself. I mean, you guys sit up here and listen to them talk and run their mouth. Oh, I'd sue them, yada, yada, yada. MS. I don't know if somebody can sue, sue somebody them. for saving their life. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me rephrase. Let me let me make. Let me. I don't care what color they are. I've heard them all say it. I've I've heard white people say it. I've heard Chinese people say it. I mean, okay. You know, and that and and what they're doing is they're just setting themselves up because if they do actually have a mild stroke and they just so happen to quit breathing, nobody's going to give them CPR if they're going to try to clean them out and sue them for every dime they got. Okay. Let me ref let me I, let me rephrase it. I I would say, okay, are you her family? Come here. I'm going to teach you CPR. You put your check, put your hands right here, and I would teach them CPR and let them give it to their own family. Okay, let you me... You can walk them through it. It's not hard to do. Okay, let me rephrase that. And let their own family give them CPR. That way, if they crack a rib, it ain't on me. I know they're going to crack a rib. It don't matter. Let me rephrase it. Okay, you just had a long day of work. You get off work. You go home. Uh, you open the door. Your your your, your um, pets, they can hear you opening up the door. They know it's you coming, so they charging towards the door. As soon as you open the door, you see your pets, they're coming towards you. All of a sudden, your, I, I don't know if you have a preference, but the one that, if you like a particular pet more than the other pets, then we'll say that one. If not, whatever one pet, but either way, one of them, as it was running, all of a sudden it just kicked over. Well, you ran over there to that, to that one that fell down and you got to talking to him and trying to get him over stuff, but the pet was unresponsive and unconscious. What do you do? I've already had that happen. My what? schnauzer died in my arms. What happened? I gave her CPR and brought her back. What? How did you go about doing it? You did chest compressions? No, but you can do chest compression. What? I closed her mouth and blowed in through her nose, and she came back. Okay. You had your schnauzer. Yeah. 
passed away in your arms. She died in my arms. She had CHF. You said you was not. You, you are, it is, it's too early. You cannot go right now. I am not. I refuse to let you go like this. Mm -hmm. So you put her down. You did she chest compressions baby. and you did mouth to mouth. I grabbed her up, scooped her up like this, and had her her stomach and front legs across like this, and I was, uh, slung my keys over on the porch, and I gave a big old blow in her mouth, and she had a, a, a mini uh, seizure, and she came right back. Mm. Okay. But the second time, I lost her. You tried to save her twice, though. Mm -hmm. Well, she she bled out at Mama's. All right, now let me ask you this then. I couldn't save her that time. What's it? Wait, wait. The guy who goes deer hunting for you. Jay. Jay. All right. He's on his way to your house. He call he, he calls you a text message. You say, hey, 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 uh, baby, or uh, niece, or whatever he call you. I'm on my way over there to bring you this this deer. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a, I got a twelve pointer. You know, he, he cut him up and everything, got him for you. So he brings it to you. Y'all get the deer. Y'all do a little talking, whatever. He turns around. He's walking back to his car as he or his truck or whatever. As he's going back to his truck, he falls down. You go out there. Hey, man, get up, man. Why you? What's wrong with you? You 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 check him. He's unresponsive. What happens next? I call the fire station. Who's one block right there by his house? That's got the shock paddles. Is that one block, but close to your house too? There, there. You can hit. You can stand on his porch and just about shoot a rock and hit the fire station. But he came and brought you deer to your house. I give them give him CPR till they come. Mouth to mouth. No. Because okay. he's on a feeding tube. You go to mashing on his chest, he's gonna pick that mess up everywhere. Especially if he's just giving himself a bowl. If he wasn't on, if he wasn't on the feeding tube. Mouth to mouth? No. I make sure his airway was clear and I'd start chest compressions till the fire department got there. Okay. Because in CPR you don't have to do mouth to mouth anymore. You just do chest compressions till someone till someone comes. Or until someone shows up with an ambu bag or whatever. And then you do fifteen seconds of chest compressions and then I you stop and do, do the mouth thing. I'm familiar with, 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 with the but CPR thing. I, I would do chest compressions till the fire station got there with the pat, shock and paddles and the ambu bag. Okay, let me reframe. Because we've got all kinds of fire stations all up and down Art Street, and they all have the shock or paddles. Let me, refer, let, me, let, me, let me switch up the question a little bit. All right. The guy. How are you, man? Appreciate you. It's all good. Thank the, you. The all guy good. who brings you the deer. He on his way over there, he's pulling up in the yard. You can hear him coming. He pulls up in the yard. Well, you and the Schnauzer, y'all going out there to get the, the deer from him. Well, it just so happening, it just so happens, uh, some freak occurrence happened or some lightning struck or something, and him and the Schnauzer both fell over. You checked CPR, you checked uh, for pulse on both of them, and both of them are out of there. That's not gonna work. So you gotta go to never, one of them. I don't never take my dog, so that was not gonna happen. My baby stays at home where it's safe. I'm saying he came to your house with the deer to give you the deer. You and the, you and the, your your my baby. My schnauzer's not gonna be with me though. If your schnauzer was mm -hmm. with you, who what, what would have, you do? What would I do? Yeah, well, I'd, you gotta save one of them. Well, you got nine minutes, so. So for that nine minutes, who would you who would you go to first? Your 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 your, your baby, who you love, cherish. You know that's your that's your baby. You know, your best friend, or this guy. I'd pull the baby over there to me, and I'd do the mouth I'd do the mouth breaths with him and the chest compressions on Jay. Okay. And I'd do the mouth breath on my schnauzer and chest compressions on Jay. You could do the chest compressions on the dog, but I I did I blowed in Hillary's mouth and she came instantly came right back. So. Wait, Hillary is the schnauzer? Mm-hmm. Okay. She immediately came right back with no problems. So 